little ways there, and I want you to listen to what. Now, this is talking about last. If I read your writing, you know I don't go into a lot of things, and uh, a lot of people do. But this is talking about Israel that had uh, lied God, threatened God, and you know what they done? When we look at something that ain't worth nothing to look at. Brother Ben, and you know, let talk about it and make people's feelings and hurt the feelings. You know what? You know how come we're doing it? You listen to this scripture. We're doing it ignorantly. Amen. Come on now, amen. amen. Bible said in verse 13, and if the whole congregation of Israel sin through what? Ignorance. And the thing be high from the eyes of the assembly, they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which should not be done and are guilty. Amen. Tim Smith done a good job teaching this morning on the laws of the Bible. And that's what I'm talking about here. Moses writ, wrote the Ten Commandments that belongs to God. And if you look at it, I'm all, I, 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 I hate to say this, but it's true, and I, I'm going to say it. Every one of us, sometime or another, has broken all them commandments. Amen. I like what Brother David Moore said oh, been a year ago, Brother David Moore, and his son's going to talk about it. The Bible said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And he said, ever bad as they are, break it. Amen. Come on, I've got my wife up a little bit over here. Come on, amen. We're all guilty before God. And you know what? We go out here and do things, and we do it ignorantly. And after it's done, we wish we had never done it. Amen. Amen. So it's done now. If the whole congregation of Israel, and God said now, if the whole congregation of North Side do sin ignorantly, the last of that verse are read, we're going to be found guilty. And the Bible said, when the sin which they have sinned against, it is known that. There the congregation shall offer a young bullock. Listen, they offered bullock plant. Jesus offers himself for us. Amen. We don't have pain no more bulls or ox or sheep or nothing to die for your sins. Jesus done paid it off. Amen. By God, he paid the price on Calvary. Amen. There's a fellow that come back. A wonderful man can be saved anymore. I said, I have never known. Calvary being too full. Wow. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says the bullock for sin. Now see what they done? They uh, uh, they kill a, they have a bullock, they dress it, brother Lance, put it on the hog and bring about it and all that. But you know what, like the Tim talked this morning, boy, ain't we glad we ain't under the law. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We can come to this altar, come before Jesus and say, Lord, you died for us, you, you paid the price. And if I sin, please forgive me. Amen. And you know what? If you mean it from your heart, he'll forgive you. Amen. And the Bible said, bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. Now, you know they brought the bullock in before the congregation. And they dressed it and have it done it, fixed it, brought it in. Well, I come this morning to bring and represent you, Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank God he's a sufficient sacrifice for all sins. Amen. And the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock before the Lord, and the bullock shall be killed before the Lord. Well, wouldn't that be some kind of stuff? Bring an animal in here before the congregation and kill it right here in the church? Ain't you glad that you don't live in that kind of atmosphere? Amen. 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 And I'm going to tell you something. I believe it. I, I, I'm trying to preach the word. I'm trying to tell you the truth. And, and I believe mean, it's a sin because you sit back there and won't say amen. Back it up. Amen. 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 
If you don't think that, then let me. Why don't you come back to church and tell me you don't love me, you don't like me anymore, and I'll hug your day and tell you I love you because I am a child of God. Yeah, Amen. Amen. I said it about the Sanders. Uh, uh, somebody said that went all over the Lord said, if I leave down here and get out of here, they'd be glad to come back. But you know what? By the year or later, here they come back and treat them like they're been here all their life. And, and they and they couldn't go up and know how to handle it. Come on. Arnold, we ain't supposed to walk around with our nose stuck up my arm and his shoulder and old nose stuck over his shoulder and saying, I ain't never going to speak to him no more. Y'all tell you something. Are you in a congregation of God today? Do you need a trip to the altar and ask God to forgive you all the junk you've talked about about this church and about the people and about them that's not here? Amen. Oh, Lord, God, preach out there. No, amen. You, amen, brother. I'm glad. I told the church the other day, talking about Lance, and he was Lance, and I said, well, I said, uh, I thank God for the church is growing. We had parking lot full, along the side road full, the back parking lot full, and people parked up the road up yonder. I, it made me feel good to know that a man, is just his ashes there, but people come to recognize that one time or another, he was a man of God. Amen. Amen. Now listen. Amen. Well, he probably went to hell. You better go check in your book. Last I want to tell you something. If you'd have been here, you'd have probably come up here and help my hand. That preacher got up, you know what he said? He said, I'm going to thank God for this pastor. He said, he just opened the door for me. He believes in eternal salvation. I believe in eternal salvation. Tim Smith, none of us got enough of it. <laughs> Amen. Wow, preacher, I've got all I need. Well, boy, you're in bad shape. It's a little dried up in short today. Come on, amen. The congregation of the righteous ought to be on fire. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to say. Me and the uh, Lord I liked about a while ago, and Rita, she's my girl, you know, song over from it is an old black song that they used to sing. And she, she said, well, well, ain't enough of us black folks here singing. I said, no, we're going to have a bomber here to leave. <laughs> but <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that good old song. Okay. Amen. Amen. I'm going home on the mountain train. <laughs> yes, sir. You ever heard them sing that? I was at Brown Mountain, there's a quartet of black women come up there and so, oh, you've heard it in your day, I'm going home on the morning train. Woo! Amen. Morning train, I'm coming on, but I'm going home. Set the shook on the morning train, amen. 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 Well, glory to God. I'll get some of you woke up after a while. You ought to wake up. Come on. Come on, you had a good night's sleep. Amen. I pray to wake to pray for this. So, so wake up and listen. Listen to what he said. And... The priest that is anointed shall bring of the bullock blood to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the, you know what? They used to drink real blood, animal blood. Phew. Amen. I'm not going to drink none of it. But Jesus shed his. He said, I died that you could live. Amen. Amen. And you ought to be in here, like I said, because I know we'd have had to make some retreat to set. Uh, Lucy Haskins, and I read the 23rd Psalm. I thought she was going to have a spell. She likes that. Amen. And the Bible says the priest shall dip his finger in the, some of the blood and sprinkle it even seven times, thank you, before the Lord even before the veil. You know what? That's one of God's numbers, seven. Yeah. Nine was one of his numbers. Twelve was one of his numbers. Eight. Okay, thank you. Amen. And the Bible said, He shall put of the blood upon the horns of the altar. You know what? We, we ought to get in this altar, get on our knees, and say, Lord, let me get a hold of the horns of the altar and help me pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell this, this, this story to <laughs> The song on Dover in yesterday, uh, yesterday, and you say, well, preacher, you can't reach him. He just comes to my mind. He said he had the uh, house up on the hill, and his barn was way down at the bottom. And he said he had to milk the cat. And he said something happened. 
that where he was standing, the bottom fell out of the earth or whatever. He fell to the bottom of the hill and held on to the old cow. And he said, I'm the only farmer in the country can milk the cow from the bottom of the hill now. <laughs> so why don't we get a hold of the horn dog, pull it down here where we can be the only church there are, Daddy, that thank God can call on God down here instead of having to get away we get to heaven. Wow. Come on, amen. I don't know where you get anything else. Illustrate, I'll preach that shit. Well, Jesus used a whole lot of things. Amen. And the Bible said that he shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar. And all the tabernacle of the congregation shall pour out all the blood of the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. You know, Lance, we'll never get a prayer through unless we have prayed a door open to where we can get in touch with God. Amen. 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 I believe we're going to have to have our own door. We'll open up. Does anybody ever in a dream or vision? Now, listen, I, I, don't, I believe in vision. I believe in dreams. Amen. And I've seen heaven one time. Has anybody else ever seen it? Amen. While I was on my bed, I'll tell you about 1963. And the Lord visited and said, come up here. And I come, was coming out of the bed. And I said, hi, Lord. And went through the roof of the house. And when it did, the gates opened. The big table and the white table called. Angels all around. And I said, Lord, a little higher. And he said, you're going to have to go back. It's not time now. Preacher, you, you believe? Oh, I don't believe it. I'm there. Amen. Come on, amen. I believe. I'm going to tell you something. Can I say this without making hay for any man? I believe we're listening to gospel music instead of a bunch of this weirdo junk. I believe our minds are going to be more on heaven than it would be listening to the devil's prayer. Amen. amen. The doctor told me one time, uh, well, Jim Porch, you know, was in a coma 14 years. And they said, but play gospel music because he is a preacher. Play gospel music in his room. And when you go in there and that music of the Lord and all there and all kinds of good singing, he'd be a smile when he knew he was on his face. And he couldn't wake up. I wonder why. He'd look at me like that, turn over and look at me and, and throw his little hand up. And he couldn't wake up. And I said, Lord, why? Why can't he? Fourteen years he lay there. With machines on and all that stuff. But I believe old Jim's in heaven today. The Bible says, He that suffer with me shall also reign. Amen. And the Bible says, He shall take all the fat. Listen. I know, I know somebody might go off saying he called me fat. Well, if you if you are a great your mind on your fat more than you have the word of God, that's your problem. But the Bible says here, and he shall take all the fat from him and burn it upon the altar, all the fat upon that animal, and pile it on the altar and burn it. For an incense unto God. Man. Take it, don't don't go to look at uh, I don't know where you believe it or not, they had on television the other day. At these uh, women in this uh, one country, uh, the, well, they take and tie something around their young and foot and it hurts and make them drink milk and all because their men are heavy, built, big women and that's why they make the child all the time. And they're right here, we don't tell them, had that strap around his foot and they attacked it if they didn't drink the milk. You know, it'd be good if God put something around our neck tightening us all because we didn't shout. <laughs> Woo! Oh. Amen. Boy, I don't know about you, but I feel a good spirit here today. Amen. Amen. Preacher, yes, the spirit's good here today. Amen. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for his sin offering. So shall he do with this. And the priest shall make a atonement for them, and it shall be forgiven them. You know, I'm glad that, that we don't have priests here that stands in and, and offers their self. Jesus has done that. He said he'd give his life. Amen. And the Bible said he shall carry forth the bullock without the count and burn him as he burns the first bullock 
It is a sin offering for the congregation. Amen. Amen. You know what? There ain't nobody in here better than nobody else. Preacher, I'm better than so and so, believe it or not. God made us all in His likeness, in His image, and that's the way we're going to stay with our own God. I belong to Him. You belong to Him. Amen. Uh, I've got a daughter named here today. She's going to have to bad case of the flu. I guess for you to eat here, but if there's anything else, I'll let God give me with it. Amen. Well, preacher, I told you, you're my youngest too, but I think God's going to give you a whooping if you don't love me. If you don't serve me, amen. 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 Now listen to what he said. When a ruler has sinned, has done somewhat through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord, is God concerning things which should not be done, and is guilty. I'm going to leave it there. Read it in a song. Preacher, what are you talking about? I'm talking about you here today, and you've done or said things ignorant. You know, we accuse a lot of people of things sometimes when it ain't true. I've been accused a whole lot of things, and I've got to use to it. I just... Say, Lord, give me grace to overcome it. <laughs> Amen. And I don't have to worry about tomorrow. I don't have to worry about today. I don't have to worry when Jesus comes. Amen. But when he comes, I'm leaving. Anybody drives on a highway, you probably get done like I do and everybody else. I slowed down the other day and just didn't know he'd let a guy come in because I couldn't get over it. And when he come in the front of me, he just bowed it up in front of me and made it into the back. Now I told Louise, I said, that's why a lot of people get shot. Yep. Because these road rangers and people out there are trying to misuse and collect the money. Amen? I've heard people say about this mash thing you got with it, but in the summer, they come out now and call this lawyer and you can sue that company and get some money and I heard them say, I'm going to try that out. I, well, if I live a long time and the mash helped me live, I don't think I want to sue the company because God takes care of it. Always think. Are you here today loving him because